60% more gripping. So scary. 80% louder sound effects on every turn and landing. Ninety percent more insightful athlete interviews. I feel like I'm floating when I'm skiing, and in that moment, nothing oh, else matters. God. Cut. We've heard that a thousand times. Freedom. Ninety percent less athlete interviews. One hundred percent more ripping women. Two. Oh, all these five. One hundred eighty percent more authentic live audio. I've got that, like, sweaty, I've got a poo feeling. Ew. 10% more soul. Did you get the shot? This is ridiculous. Close boy, hit her again. 450% more pro skier, husband and wife interaction. Careful, Cody, there's rocks below you. I hate it, really 250% more masterful editing. Nailed it. Oh, that's nice. Oh, stop! Stop! Ooh. 160% more cinematic. Cinematic means slow motion with a moving camera and exaggerated sound effects. One hundred fifty percent tougher. Oh, no. Three hundred thirty percent more stoked. Stoke. <laughs> and three hundred percent more sad. Oh no! Sorry, send. My bad. Three hundred percent more sin. What? Yeah. <laughs> Add it all up, and that's two thousand one hundred ninety percent more. Okay. So much freaking more oh. that this movie's gonna make you wanna Everybody! drop everything. I thought that was kind of referring to us, like we. Drop everything? Whatever. Oh my god, the shoot! <laughs> Mark Abbott, Marcus Ader, Michelle Parker, Sammy Carlson, Eric Hjolfsson, Cody Townsend, and Elise Sogstad, Tanner Rainville, Aaron Blunk, Sander Hadley, Chris Rubens, Connery Lundin, and more. With a guest appearance by JT Holmes. Hey. How's it going? Damn knuckle draggers. Doesn't anybody turn anymore? Drop everything. Drop everything. Dropping this September. Red Bull Skills ist ein Wahnsinnsrennen, wo vier Disziplinen auf einmal fast ohne Ski wechseln. Vom Super G rein in den Slalom, noch ein weiter in die Abfahrt. Und zum Schluss nochmal, äh, der Riesenslalom ist natürlich konditionell auch eine große Herausforderung. Ja, schwierig mit diesen Übergängen. Einerseits weißt du, so ist das Grad von, was du denkst, aber ein kurzer Ski. Und andererseits braucht es noch ein Tor ab und zu eine Richtung. Ich mir hat sofort erinnert, dass wir früher wie, wie im Weltcup-Start stehen. So, so ist es zugegangen, ganz hoch, hoch konzentriert. Und es haben auch ein paar einige gesagt, sie sind brutal nervös.
das ist für den kompletten Skifahrer perfekt, gell? weil so beim Riesenslalom, da kann gleich einmal einer vielleicht ganz, ganz gut dabei sein. Aber da oben, da trennt sich dann die Spreu vom Weiz. Ich habe mir zuerst mal den Lauf angeschaut und habe die Tücken herausgefunden sozusagen. Das hat dann anscheinend ganz gut gepasst. Natürlich mit dem ersten Platz ist schon was Besonderes und das passiert nicht jeden Tag. Super, ich freue mich überhaupt auf dem Ski, weil auf den habe ich mir am meisten Zeit. Ja, jetzt schauen wir mal, dann am 3.4. wird es in die Lenzer Heide gehen. Und das wird sicher ein cooles Event. Da werden wir alle heiß drauf sein und es Beste geben. It isn't by getting out of the world that we become enlightened. It's by getting into the world. By getting so tuned in that we can ride the waves of existence. We must explore. We must reach into the unknown. Saw you the other day Looking so Like it wouldn't happen 
making sense of anything that you could find Because it's just about to happen And you'll be there You must have known the storm was coming When the clouds appear I'm privileged to have grown up in the mountains and skied my whole life and I want to see my kids still being able to ski and their kids being able to ski. People that spend a lot of time in the mountains and people that spend a lot of time outside are basically on the front lines of it all. They can see it happen firsthand. We feel like we need to be doing less of this, less of that. But I don't think it's about doing less, I think it's about doing more.
is not the, the destination, it's the adventure along the way, and it seems cliche to say that, but that's really how it is. situation is much worse across the country. 26 deaths are being blamed on this cold snap. I can tell you from experience, I mean, if I'm going into something that's really intense and someone else has ridden it before me, the level of intensity is totally brought down a notch. When we asked to go there, he said, no. Go, go, go. You cannot escape from this place. He does not want to be in this area at all. And let's go get tons of fuel and go here. What planet the fuck are you from? One of the points in my life where I could say, like, no one else has ever been here, ever. Alaska's definitely had a history of hope they came for the gold rush, they came for the oil rush, they came for the rush of the king crab. They're just looking for adventure and something new. It's not the gold, it's the finding of the gold. That was my immediate response. It was like, oh my God, every friend I know is, should be here right tomorrow because this is unbelievable. It truly was a golden age of skiing. You read back at various times of creativity and energy, and Valdez had all that in spades. When we got up there, it just blew our minds. Oh. People hear these stories about, you know, Chet Simmons and guns and AK-47s and 9 mils and riding on pontoons, and uh, let me tell you, it was true. The further we go out from base, the more we start thinking, well, you know, there must be more. Friendly people are a part of the story of Alaska. That story is changing rapidly. From the old Alaska to the new Alaska. We haven't seen all of the story of Alaska because much of it will be happening in the future. Let's go.
I think what I am trying to do, I owe a lot to people who are like opening up these scenes. Every generation has their pioneers. I've wanted it for years, and uh, you know, I'll look at everything differently now. Let's go. I was a good kid, a strong kid. I'll never be perfect enough for you. I mean, you're stressing the boy out. I lost my way. I'm done. I'm not going to help you anymore until you want to help yourself. Hey, Mom, I never wanted to bring you into this. I just had to get away for a few days. Enjoy the mountain, Eric. Always do. This is the craziest winter I've seen in years. The first thing we do is we file a missing persons report. The process will probably take about a day or two. I can't wait a day or two. He is out there. Wait! What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Please, you have to find myself. I don't think I have too much time. Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> you oh, really big, huh? Yeah.
much as it all breaks down here under the pressure. trip has been a blast. It's pretty incredible to be just completely isolated. Kind of up in the middle of nowhere right now. I mean, this lodge is just tucked into a valley. I mean, we've been cooking full course meals and sauning at the end of every day. Um, and then every morning skinning out into some of the best backcountry powder skiing terrain that I've ever seen. First ever backcountry trip and first ever ski touring trip behind. It's been epic. A little rough and exhausting but amazing at the same time. Good snow, good lines every day, no tracks. What more could you ask for?
The Grave is pretty legendary. It's kind of crazy to think that a lift can bring you up into this like extreme skiing terrain. And that's kind of built this culture of these people that live here and ski in these mountains. And it's kind of all built around this passion of um, getting out every day, no matter what the conditions, and ski in big lines. The Grave is a place that uh, it has many different characters from many different countries that are all joined together by a common love of the mountains. And the unique character of uh, Le Grave makes it uh, an attraction for like-minded people who, uh, who fit into the communal spirit of the place. Yeah, it's good. So we arrived uh, two weeks ago in La Grave. It was the uh, beginning of March for uh, a ski trip together with Johnny Collinson. This place is pretty crazy. The mountains are huge for a ski resort. Wow, it's really hard to describe this place without experiencing it for yourself. Everyone has their own opinion of what La Grave is, but for me, it represents uh, a freedom and a lifetime of humility. <laughs> Pour moi, la Grave, euh, je vais dire que c'est un, un espace de liberté. C'est un endroit où on peut encore, euh, je vais pas dire faire ce qu'on veut ou on veut comme on veut. Mais en tout cas, c'est pas des gens qui nous disent fais pas ci, fais pas ça. Ce que je trouve de vraiment cool ici, c'est qu'on te donne des informations euh, euh, terrain et ensuite c'est toi qui, euh, qui te prends en charge en fait. Est, tu sais, on est dans un monde où tout est hyper cadré, on te dit tout ce qu'il faut faire. Là, c'est bien parce que tu étais sous ta propre responsabilité. Pour moi, c'est vraiment ce qui m'a qui ce qui m'attire ici, qui me plaît et qui me fait y rester. Quoi. There is definitely a special aura 
around this place. It's uh, like how the village and the cable car are built on the bottom of this north face, which has like only one easy way to ski down. And all the other ski descents are pretty much uh, non-beginner friendly. To enjoy the terrain in La Graf, you need to have a knowledge about the, the whole mountaineering stuff, the, to rappel down gullies that are ending up on huge cliffs or just to travel on glaciers. And that's why La Graf is quite special. You either have your knowledge or you're better having a guide with you. Um, the game of patience, that's kind of what's changed here. People, people don't wait anymore. <laughs> if you wake up and it's bluebird and it's sunny and it's new snow, people are going. It's like off to the races. That's the biggest change I've seen in, in my time here. Village is the same and we love it the way it is. Oh, depuis les 15, 20 dernières années, le, la grave, je vais, oh, je vais pas dire que ça a changé parce que... Ça reste toujours pareil, mais en fait, ça a évolué. On n'a on a plus du tout les mêmes skis, on c'est plus la même approche. Moi, il y a 20 ans, quand je venais skier là, c'était le run euh, saucisson, bouteille de pif. Au bout de trois, trois rotations, on s'arrêtait dans les vallons avec les potes, c'était cool. Maintenant, les, le matériel est devenu plus performant, ski plus large, et puis ça ride à bloc en haut, en bas, et il faut en faire le plus possible, il faut aller faire sa trace. Faut... C'est, Je trouve que ça a évolué. Alors après, c'est pas ni mieux ni moins bien. Chaque époque a ses... Ses avantages et ses inconvénients. A pretty special line we skied was the uh, Serac Paradise with Benji. It was the third descent of it, and I think a lot of the guys around here have looked at the line for years, and uh, it takes a while to get into it, and then it's a pretty exposed exit underneath all the Seracs. Benji, we are at the Breche de la... Breche du Rateau, maintenant. Breche du Rateau. We hope that the neige will be better de l'autre côté. Yep. Go down here, we're going to get another one. You can see Johnny. <laughs> powder? Well, it used to be powder. Good. Yeah. Breche de la Meche. There's a couple friends here having fun. Nice one. Got the skis back on. Going up. Sam's breaking trail again. Now it's only getting technical, right? Good. Everything's holding. Everything is holding. For now. Later. Later. 
Yeah, the special thing about this line is that you're really like grappling almost two times 50 meters down to this exposed chute, which is um, quite steep, like 55 degrees descent, which is ending lower down on the plateau from where you really have to ski down fast because it's exposed to the Seracs. That's why the name Serac Paradise was uh, given to it. And for us, it was really a good, a good run to, to share with Benji. Yeah. Cold feet, tired legs. What else do we have here? Uh, Fun? Thanks, Adam. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, Benji. Thank you so You're much. You're really, yeah. really welcome. The biggest appeal is the, just the, the sheer amount of vertical you get to ski. And the skiing brought me here, but the, the community actually kept me here. The friends and people I've made in this, it's a pretty tight-knit village. It's a, it's, a, it's a small little family. That kind of kept me here, but when you can ski that much vertical, that fast, with that kind of access, with minimal crowds, it's kind of hard to go anywhere else. <laughs> The freedom, the freedom of Le Graf, the fact that there are no ropes saying don't go here, there are no people patrolling the piste saying you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, that freedom is uh, pretty unique in uh, most Alpine areas, so uh, that, that freedom is uh, an incredible privilege that I hope will never go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. 
Gemini in different sounds. Just be on my ish. All kind of ish going on. My brother doing 30. I gotta do something out here. Something different out here. You know, I know. It really is from the block though.
Sayad. I am a coordinator of community-based tourism Arsambo. In Kyrgyzstan, right now, we have 15 groups CBT, all in the regions. They are trying to develop uh, rural ecological tourism. I am uh, in, from Arsambo, which is located in the south part of Kyrgyzstan. 2006, we decided to develop winter tourism. Then we had the two skiers, we were really proud because the first time we had the skiers finally. Last year, 2014, we had 70 skiers. This year, I think, will be more than because uh, we are in a uh, in lot of articles in the magazine, uh, even in Swiss Alpine Club, we are, we are there and then a lot of people now thinking come to Kyrgyzstan and then ski and then discover Kyrgyzstan because uh, you know Kyrgyzstan uh, more than 94 percent land is covered by mountains, high mountains. That's why we are starting to develop winter tourism. It's underground all the time, zero, zero degrees. Yeah, right? close to the ground. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay, and then this needs to be perpendicular to the snow. <laughs> good, good, okay. Okay, like it. <laughs> carry on, carry on, it's good. In front. A bit more. Today is uh, really foggy and wet again. The snow is not really good, so we decided we're gonna build a bank slalom slash slop style for the kids. Okay, we are ready. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. are walking uphill for an hour and a half with their ski gear, then just lapping all day with a huge smile on their faces, not a single complaint, just talk to be up there and a real true passion for ski. <laughs> but they say no, I have uh, three children. We <laughs> <laughs> have gear for guys and the faction team. Okay. Yeah, that will be some, uh, some gear we took with us and we will invite you to thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, okay. Here you are. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? I remember. Yeah, yeah. I did like that. <laughs> Famous pictures. <laughs> <laughs> We went to Kyrgyzstan to bring here to this community and in the end we got so much back than we expected. They really opened their home and shared their culture with us. It was such an inspirational trip. We 
drove to the country to achieve the second goal of our trip. Sleep in the yacht and finally drive home. A good start by all four of these women, and Anis Moran squeezes out Jacqueline Legere for second place, just behind Amanda Trunzo. Anis Moran with great edge work, and Jacqueline Legere is, oh, she's struggling a little bit now. She's well back and forth behind Miriam Trepanier through the Nissan chicane. Amanda Trunzo, solid on those edges, solid skating. Anis Moran right there. Keeping a close eye on the line. BF Goodrich rock drop. Trunzo easily manages it. Anise Moran right there as the two front runners open up a huge gap on Amanda, or excuse me, 
on um, Jacqueline Legere and Miriam Trepanier. Surprised to see Jacqueline Legere so far back. Amanda Trunzo, a nice lead now on the rest, but Anise Morand not giving any space at all to Amanda Trunzo, pushing hard across the finish line. Oh, oh my goodness, how close was that? Anise Morand keeps pushing hard to the finish. Miriam Trepanier loops out just to the finish line, and there comes Jacqueline Legere. What I'm really impressed by is how fantastic Anise Moran looked in that race. She almost took Trunzo off the start, but Trunzo pinched her off in this corner. You can see the reason Jacqueline got relegated to the back, she took a little fall before the roller section right here, popped back up, but even just that minuscule up and down will cost you big time. But like you said, Troy, what's really interesting here was Anais, like literally losing this race by a skate. Like it just shows the level she has come to getting better and better. She is gonna be the one to really push on Trunzo in the future, along with Jacqueline Legere and Marion Trapani. So all four of these women, just extraordinary racing. Big start by Scott Croxall. He's got that inside line locked up. Mirko Lati right there with him. Luca Delago sitting in third place right now, trying to block out big Kyle Croxall. Kyle Croxall making a great line on the inside, though. He takes over the lead ahead of Luca Delago. Excuse me. Mirko Lati now sitting in second place. Just Scott goes oh, down. Scott goes down. Scott goes down early in the Nissan chicane. That leaves a wide open for Mirko Lati, who could well take the win here for the first time. And it will be a first big win for him in the senior level. But he's got Kyle Croxall right there with him, as Kyle's I said earlier on. These two guys are very similar. Kyle looking for that line, and he may well find it. Here comes Luca Delago. He is sneaky, he is fast, he is tricky, and he is good to go. And Scott Kyle Croxall can't outside. find it. Helos goes down earlier, and Kyle Croxall makes the pass on the inside, and Kyle Croxall's got a win. He has got the 1,000 points here in Ivescula. Mirko Lati was so close, but he'll have second place. That is a huge goal for Kyle Croxall right now, and an absolute fantastic win which means Kyle Croxall should take over the lead in the overall standings. And Scott Croxall disappointed with a nice run to start things off, but made a big mistake in that Nissan chicane where he just lost his footing in all that snow covered ruts. Let's look at this from the start. So Scott gets a great start as expected. Mirko right behind him, Luca coming in third. Now Kyle's in fourth position that Point. Keep in mind, but he always has a way of staying composed. He makes an early pass right here on Luca. So that's number one pass coming around this corner. He comes the inside, skates his way out. So now he's got his brother and Lati in front. Coming through the Nissan chicane, Scott takes a bad line, gets caught in the ruts, and goes down. Tough break for Scott, but that completely opened the door for Mirko to take this thing home. Now you can never count out Kyle Crocs, so the momentum he gains on this track is incredible, especially after the rock drop. That is where he makes it happen, and Lati could not do anything. TV UK, Sarah Duffy here from Mount Buller in Australia. Our ski season is between June and October every single year and we would love to see you for a ski down under sometime soon.
I'm Shemi Olcott, Ski Club of Great Britain Ambassador. Now this is my favourite workout, the resistant band workout. This little guy is super compact, you can throw it in your bag and work out absolutely anywhere and it really does enhance your workout by adding resistance so you build muscles quicker. First up we have an exercise I learnt when I skied with the Canadian ski team. Place the band above your knees, feet hip width apart. Making sure the other hip stays still, rotate one knee in and pull back out into alignment. Repeat on the other side before lowering into a squat. Sticking with the quad muscles, use a thinner large resistance band because next up we have the box squat. Step onto the band, feet shoulder width apart, raise the band above your head with wide straight arms. Trying to keep your upper body tall by pulling your shoulder blades together, lower your tailbone towards the ground. Using the same band, moving on to our first hamstring exercise, again stand on the band, feet hip width apart, raising the band over your neck and holding it tight to your chest. Drop your hips back whilst lowering your upper body forward with big emphasis on keeping a straight back. Finish the movement at the top by squeezing your glutes so that your hips end slightly forward. Next up we have a two progression small band hamstring exercise. First up, legs only superman. Place the band above your knees and extend one leg behind you with the foot pointing down. Try and keep the hips level throughout. Slightly more challenging is the same movement pattern but standing, either supported by a chair or the wall. Put one foot in the band and extend to a straight leg behind you. Taking a lighter resistance band if possible, place the band just above your ankles and adopt a plank position. Squeezing the glutes, keeping your core engaged, pulse your straight leg twice towards the sky. Using the same band placed above your knees, drop down to a side plank on your knees. Lift the top leg up and down, keeping your body in one straight line. You can also hold in between pulses for a bigger muscle burn. This is another favourite that you see all over Ski Racer's Instagram accounts, the Monster Walk. Place the band above your knees, sinking your hips to the ground in a semi-squat. Step laterally, making sure you lock your hips parallel to the ground. The lower you go, the tougher this becomes. Next up we have the monster crawl. Drop down to the ground, moving forward using your opposite hand and leg with level hips. More challenging is to then crawl backwards. Using two longer bands, one to make an anchor, loop the lighter band through. With slight tension on the band, stand facing your pillar or banister with feet hip width apart and a small knee bend. Move down into a squat and as you extend up, rotate to the side, straightening your arms and letting your back foot extend onto the toes, like the finish of a golf swing. Place the stronger band over your hips. Holding the band with your inside hand, take a small lateral lunge away from the pillar, pushing up and off to balance on the inside leg with parallel locked hips. Ending on my favourite exercise, the only way I have ever found to get massive ski angles without actually being on snow. With the same band layout and positioning as the last exercise, move away from the pillar so the bands are in full tension so that they can take your body weight. 
Keeping your feet planted, slowly move your ankles, knees and hips away from the pillar, simulating high ski edge angle. Once you're at your biggest edge angle, use the spring from the band to power your hips into a neutral transition position. If you want to see more of my ski fitness videos, then please check out the Ski Club of Great Britain YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me and have a great time on the slopes. The area is so great and so big that so there are a lot of possibilities around. It's a cradle of alpine skiing here in Austria, that's for sure. It was the first ski school and we are doing like off-piece skiing since 1927, I guess. Big history. <laughs> Lovely resort. Our first time here. Nice little area skiing ski out where we're sitting in St. Christoph. There's a lot of people from Britain here, Sweden, Norway, Russians. It's holiday season now in, in Holland. So we thought uh, it, was, it, was, it would be really crowded, but it isn't at all. Vicky, in the right? lift! In the lift! In the lift, both of you! Both of you! Come here to go off piece um, and enjoy the off piece game. It was, it was mainly for the off piece because we're doing an off piece uh, course for the week. First day we've skied the Veluga, off the back of the Veluga oh, down to Zers. Mm. Um, great, was that was it? and the snow in there is fantastic. It it's uh, powdery, yeah, very very nice. So I came up with the kids yesterday and we skied off the top. But I'm bringing my wife up today, just to split passengers, so that she can see the view. Check out the view. Breathtaking. Yeah. Quite good for a beginner as well because you see like how people ski because you've got very good skiers around here so it's a good motivation to keep on training to be as good as them. <laughs> go up risky. <laughs> now you can go to uh, crazy kangaroo or most of it. If you're here, you should do that. Party! She told us to come here. We come here every year because there's great food, there's great dancing, and the skiing is happening all the time. You're here every year just to go down the slide. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, they did girls, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, they did. Down to the slide down at the toilet. It's yeah. easier than going down the steps. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, I have to say. That's yeah. the best sledging we've done, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this thing's amazing, isn't it? So much fun. So much fun. I did it last week and these guys were like, let's do it again. I was like, yes, let's do it again. <laughs>
this is where my story begins. of towering glass trees and iridescent lights. clarity to complete my story. As I pursue my vision across the Pacific, I begin to realize that not every aspect of this world was presented in the form of a reverberating hub of technology. Hong Kong's strict confines offer no privacy, nowhere to hide, and nowhere to reflect. But, as I follow Kieran Nicola into this expansive and foreign land, the mountains present themselves as an ideal escape. A place where my vision can prosper. Those who cultivate their lives along a visual path discover the inner somnolence which accompanies free and remote environments. rigid lakes. A place where the atmosphere is unmarred by industry, and the earth is free to shape itself as it wills. <laughs> 